Good morning, YouTube. Um, it's almost eight in the morning, and uh, I got a text from Eugene last night. And he says, "Yo, guess what came today? It's a big old brown box, and it could only be one thing because today is twenty-eight. My first coffee. Oh, it's absolutely thundering outside today, and someone's already awake. Let's go wake her up. Good morning. Good morning, El. Good morning, El. Okay, so now we're on the way to the studio, and I really can't wait to see what uh, is in the big brown box that Eugenia said we received. Hey, Eugene. Check out what Eugene is doing. See, you got a little camera over there. Hey, guy. Hey, man. I think this is one of the first vlog style videos we have. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Got my text? Yeah, I heard you have a. I heard you have a box for us to unbox. You know, I haven't opened this, uh, so w whatever it is, I, I don't really. Yeah, on the way here, I, uh, I sort of said, yeah. MSI could have sent us a t-shirt Yeah, or like, 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 like a little lucky, you know yeah. But uh, I guess we'll find out together It has to be the 37th right? I mean, okay It does say graphics card on the outside Okay But they could send us anything, right? 1660 Super <laughs> <laughs> In case uh, you guys want to see and There's some instructions on how you, I guess, fold the box <laughs> Alright, so it is the 3070 Really nice, it's, it's even the, it's the Gaming X Trio. Cool. Let's take a look at what's inside. Uh, later, in post. What? I don't know man, like, is this public information? I think so, it's the reviews guy man. Cool. Yeah. And of course, you have the card itself, along Ooh. with the GPU SAG bracket. Wow, look at that. Right, right there, the 3017 Gaming X Trio, we didn't get pumped. If you're on the lookout for a new graphics card capable of obliterating the 1080p limit, performing excellently at 1440p and dishing out decent 4K performance, all at an amazing price point, then you'll want to keep watching this video. By the end of the video, you'll know exactly how the new RTX 3070 stacks up against Nvidia's other recent releases and whether or not it makes sense for you to pick up the new RTX 3070. But before we dive into the thick of things, let's just sit and chat for a bit. I mean, the RTX 3080 and 3090 have been out for just over a month now, but stock shortages and scalping are still rampant, and it doesn't look like these shortages are going to let up anytime soon. So what's a new buyer to do, right? I mean, how long can you hold out before deciding to do something else with your cash? Well, you're in luck because the RTX 3070 is finally here, and the situation is likely going to be better than Nvidia's other recent launches. Here's why. First, and I think most of us can agree with this, the RTX 3080 and 3090 launches were poorly executed and the large part of that was related to a lack of stock at launch. 
Secondly, some users were facing issues with their AIB partner cards crashing above particular clock speeds and many people seem to think that this was due to an issue with the capacitor array on some of these cards. So are we to expect something similar with the RTX 3070? Let's look at what's happening now. The 3070's original launch date was on the 15th of October but Nvidia's delayed that to today, the 29th of October, giving manufacturers more time to address the issues that plagued previous launches. From what we can see, the quantity of new cards we're getting at launch now is definitely more than what we saw with the RTX 3080 and 3090. So if this benchmark is any indication of how Nvidia is working to improve your experience, then we think the 3070 will do just fine. Now let's take a look at where the 3070 sits in the rest of Nvidia's new lineup. First off, the 3070 comes in with 5,888 CUDA cores, 8 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, a 256-bit memory bus width. 14 gigabits per second of memory speed and has a rated TDP of 240 watts. As with all of Nvidia's new Ampere cards, the 3070 also comes with 2nd generation RT cores and 3rd generation Tensor cores. Now, it should come as no surprise that these paper specifications are less powerful than the 3080 and 3090s, but what do they mean in real terms, right? I mean, I know we didn't run benchmarks the last time we unboxed the 3080, so we'll do right by you and give you those numbers today. The card we'll be using for our benchmarks is the MSI RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio. It looks almost indistinguishable from any other 30 series Gaming X Trio out there and sports the same LED strip on the side. Along with an MSI logo below it that lights up in RGB as well. Uh, the GeForce RTX logo here doesn't light up, you know, but if you mount the card vertically, you'll see three stripes of LEDs running along the center of the card. Um, there is one fan that cuts through these three strips and this is MSI's Tox Fan 4.0. Now, the Tox fans 4.0 are a little different from the Tox fans 3.0 we see on MSI's more affordable Ventus lineup of graphics cards. Uh, on the Tox 4.0, you see two blades joined by you know what we look what looks like a plastic little strip, but on the 3.0 you have alternating blade designs. The other difference between the Gaming X Trio and the Ventus is that the Gaming X Trio will always come with RGB, whereas the Ventus usually is in a more muted and industrial aesthetic. That means no RGB. Uh, the Gaming X Trio will also have 3 fans, but for the 3070, the Ventus will come in 3 and 2 fan versions, namely the 3X and the 2X. Moving on to the backplate, the RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio spots a graphene backplate similar to its RTX 3080 counterpart. It has also got what MSI calls a zero frozen design, meaning that its fans won't spin up until it hits 60 degrees Celsius. Lastly, this card uses two 8-pin PCIe power connectors, which makes it similar to the 3080 Gaming X Trio, but different from the RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio, which uses three of these connectors instead. Now, let's take a look at how this runs. We fit our test bench with the Intel Core i9 10900K, clocked in at 5GHz, and 32 gigs of Patriot Viper 4 Blackout clocked at 4000MHz. For choice of graphics cards, we compared our 3070 Gaming X Trio with an RTX 3070 and 3090 Gaming X Trio, and an older RTX 2080 Ti. Get ready while I spew some numbers and feel free to pause this video at any time to check out those numbers for yourselves. First up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, where we see the 3070 coming in with a very respectable 140fps average. Uh, this is just 4fps behind the 2080 Ti which is a small 2% difference. Moving on to 4K performance, the 3070 trades positions with the 2080 Ti and comes in with 82fps average compared to the 2080 Ti's 80fps. If you do have a 1440p high refresh rate monitor, the 3070 will do just fine and even perform smoothly at 4K for Tomb Raider. In control, we see the 3070 taking a lead over the 2080 Ti with an 82 FPS average at 1440p and ray tracing turned off. Uh, once we switched on ray tracing with a high preset and DLSS at 920p, uh, performance actually dropped a little for us across the board, but a 76 FPS average for the 3070 is still a very playable experience. At 4K, the 3070 struggles a little with an average of 45 FPS but still performs better than the 2080 Ti's 41 FPS average. With RTX turned on, the 3070 lost a little bit of performance at 42 FPS but still beats the 2080 Ti's non-ray trace performance. At least for control, the gaming experience for the 3070 at 4K doesn't quite hit the stable 60 FPS but that's no surprise since the 3080 is barely pushing above 50 FPS. I wouldn't call this unplayable, but it's certainly not the buttery smooth experience that hardcore gamers would want. Horizon Zero Dawn on 1440p sees the 3070 coming in with an average of 79 FPS, which falls short of the 2080 Ti's 89 FPS average. At 4K, both cards perform similarly with an average of 52 FPS for the 3070, which is quite playable for 4K. It's interesting to see the 2080 Ti trade places with the 3070 here and there, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. 
The 3070 performs pretty well in Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1440p Ultra preset, beating the 2080 Ti with 73 FPS. This is quite a significant 20% improvement, but the difference narrows down when we look at 4K performance, where the 3070 comes in with about 47 FPS average. Finally, for Death Stranding, the 3070 comes in with 123 FPS, slightly outperforming the 2080 Ti by about 4%, but both cards trade places at 4K with the 3070 coming in at 70 FPS, just 5% below the 2080 Ti. Unigine's superposition showed the 3070 coming in at the bottom with a score of about 10,669, which is about 8% poorer than the 2080 Ti. This is on the 4K optimized preset and gives you a rough idea of the card's 4K performance across most games. On a 6 game average, at 1440p, the 3070 comes in at 100 FPS, beating the 2080 Ti's 97 FPS average. At 4K, on average, the 3070 still performs slightly better than the 2080 Ti with a 59 FPS average, so if you've got a high refresh rate 1440p monitor or are looking for some decent 4K performance, the 3070 will work just fine for you. Having said that, Earlier on, we saw the 3070 trading places with the 2080 Ti in some scenarios. Now, one reason why one card doesn't consistently beat the other could be things like the amount of VRAM. The 2080 Ti has got a superior 11 gig of GDDR6 VRAM compared to the 3070's 8 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. Another factor could be the 3070's smaller memory bus width of 256 bit compared to the 2080 Ti's 352 bit. Uh, this could mean that the 3070 could suffer a little in texture-heavy games or games that require a ton of VRAM, but at half the price of the 2080 Ti, there's really nothing to complain about on the gaming front. Now, for the content creators out there, we ran some synthetic benchmarks to see if we could benefit from the 3070's superior CUDA numbers and improved RT cores and tensor cores, and the results just blew us away. Looking first at Blender, we're seeing the 3070 rendering scenes at about 15% faster than the 2080 Ti on a CUDA renderer and 30% faster with Nvidia's own Optics render engine. The difference is drastically outlined if we move to a more challenging scene, like the Barcelona Pavilion scene, with the 3070 cutting short render times by half on the CUDA render engine, which is evidence of the 3070's superior rendering performance. On Octane Bench, the 3070 beats the 2080 Ti whether it's with RTX on or off. And this simply provides more evidence for the 3070's benefit in content creation. Similarly, for V-Ray, we see the 3070 having far superior performance to the 2080 Ti. The results are quite consistent, with the 3070 showing some remarkable gains over the 2080 Ti in some cases, but never performing worse than the 2080 Ti in content creation. Unlike our gaming benchmarks, this isn't a case where they trade blows. The 3070 is simply better than the 2080 Ti for content creation. What's more impressive is the power draw. We ran Fermark's 4K preset benchmark and measured a total system power draw of 347 watts from our external power meter. Uh, considering performance was generally similar to the 2080 Ti or better in content creation, uh, we really only have good things to say about the 3070's power efficiency. For those of you wondering, the 3070 ran fine on a 650 watt power supply as per Nvidia's recommendations, but we switched to a 850 watt power supply to accommodate the benchmarking of our more powerful components and that's what we've used for all our benchmarks. GPU temperatures clocked in at a max sustained temperature of 63 degrees Celsius on load and idle at 44 degrees Celsius with an ambit of about 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, we thought that it made more sense to compare these temperatures to other 3070s, so we'll wait until more models are available and maybe do another comparison video then, along with acoustic performance. So the news is officially out. The RTX 3070 has arrived. Uh, we think that we've got enough stock to go around and boy does it perform pretty darn well. The 3070 trades blows with last generation's highly coveted 2080 Ti, proving itself to be a 1440p powerhouse and can even handle 4K at a minimum of about 45 FPS. But the real gem here is the price point. A card like the 3070 Gaming X3 we have here comes in at 939 Singapore dollars. But if you're all about performance and less about the bling, you can also take the 3070 Ventus 3X at 899 and the 3070 Ventus 2X at 869. Comparing any of these cards to the 2080 Ti that's in the region of 1,800 Singapore dollars, the 3070 is half the price, yet trades blows with the 2080 Ti. That means with the 3070, you're effectively getting the 2080 Ti at, well, half the price. Couple that with next gen RT and Tensor Cores, the 3070 is the perfect balance between gaming and content creation use, and will no doubt be one of Nvidia's fastest selling cards in its new lineup. Given its capable performance at 1440p and very playable 4K performance, the RTX 3070 will make a solid card for users who are looking to stay ahead of the curve but not necessarily looking to lead the pack. 
it's not rare to see people want something better than the average, but don't necessarily need the top of the line models. For example, if you prefer the game on a 1440p monitor or are looking for an affordable way to get into some decent 4K action, then the 3070 is perfect for you. Now, if you own a 1080p display, the 3070 will most certainly perform up to expectations and this will set you up nicely, especially if you're considering upgrading your monitor this holiday season. Now, the 3070 doesn't quite cut it as the ultimate card for gaming at 4K, but realistically, if you can afford to own a 4K gaming monitor, then you should consider the 3080 anyway. If you're comparing the 3070 to your current graphics card and wondering if this upgrade makes sense for you, let me break it down. If you own a 10 series card like the 1080 Ti, 1080, 1070 Ti or anything below that, the RTX 3070 is far superior to any of those, making this massive upgrade a very reasonable choice, especially if you're going to take a 1440p display. If you own an RTX 2060 Super and below and are looking for an upgrade, the RTX 3070 will still work very well for you. The performance gap I think is large enough to justify the upgrade. Now, while the 3070 still performs better than the 2070 Super, 2080 Super and 2080 Ti, arguably, I would think that its performance is too similar to these cards to consider it a significant upgrade for the price you're paying. If you own one of these cards, you should only consider upgrading to this if you want some kind of 4K action but can't really afford the 3080. Now, historically, Nvidia's models ending with a 70, like the GTX 1070 and RTX 2070 have all been popular cards. Looking now at the price and performance of the 3070, it's shaping up to be one of the best cards we've seen all 2020, and we could certainly use nicer things this year. While the 3070 doesn't set new performance records like the 3080 or 3090, its amazing performance per dollar will certainly make this card the new go-to standard for what makes a good deal for the majority of gamers out there. Thanks for watching guys! If you found value in this video, we would love to help you more. You know, just drop us a comment below or you know, drop us a message. Or you can also visit us at our website, www.dreamcore.com.sg to learn about how you can get your hands on the new RTX 3070. Make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss other videos like these. And we'll see you in the next one.